<clears throat> um, sorry about the notes from yesterday. I guess I thought I had already put them up and linked them, but I had not. So other than your assignment, you kind of got a free day after that for yesterday. Um, hopefully you were able to complete Tuesday's work fine. Um, you did have to watch the video, so make sure that if you haven't done that yet, when you go back to do it, make sure you watch the video that's attached. Um, many of you may have noticed that in the check-in form for Tuesday, it asked for a code word, and you had to watch the video to get the code word. So if you have not done that yet, make sure you go back and do that, because the check-in form will be your attendance for that day. All right, um, we're going to go over a few things, kind of go over what we're going to talk about today, and then I'll do attendance at the end. Um, so make sure that you're still on so that you get counted present. We might have any questions about anything. No, no questions? Okay. All right, so for today, um, we are going to go over animal welfare and animal rights. And so you have a workbook that you can follow along with and go ahead and complete the notes. So if you want to go ahead and get that uploaded so that you can follow along with us, that would probably be a good idea. All right, <clears throat> can anybody tell me the difference in animal welfare and animal rights? Or tell me what either of them are. Does anybody know what either of them are? All right. Well, since you don't know, it's good that we are learning it. So uh, Ellen DeGeneres here. Uh, I was scrolling through the... So we're going to watch a quick video. Um, it is does have a lot about Ellen in this video. Um, she is an advocate for one of the two. Um, so you're going to learn a little bit about <clears throat> what her beliefs are about animal welfare or animal rights. Um, and I noticed that a lot of people are talking about eating less meat, which I think is a fantastic idea. Last week, the agriculture industry watched as Ellen DeGeneres encouraged her millions of followers and fans to eat less or no meat at all in order to save the environment. Agriculture responded with the facts. One rancher even reaching out to Ellen herself in a now viral open letter in Beef Magazine. This rancher kindly shared factual information about who we really are. In the most respectful way, she asked Ellen to let agriculture have a shot at telling their side of the story. You see, what this rancher did was pretty dang brave because it didn't take long for the backlash to hit. Activists and those dedicated to ending animal agriculture began working in overtime. 
But before you share images with disgusting fake messages, there are a few things you should know about animal rights groups like PETA and the Humane Society of the United States. Point blank, the animal rights agenda has nothing to do with caring for the animals themselves. Their agenda has everything to do with removing all animals from human care. Yes, all, livestock, even your household pets. It does not matter to them how well these animals are cared for. As farmers and ranchers, we have watched in frustration for years as these types of groups work to destroy our industry with false narratives and horror stories. We know that caring for and protecting animals is not their main mission. They are not concerned with animal welfare. Animal rights groups have worked for decades to influence lawmakers to push legislation, regulations, and ordinance that make animal ownership more difficult. They use scare tactic propaganda to influence people who love animals into believing that their main concern is animals, but it isn't. Don't believe me? I encourage you to do some research. Most of the money donated to these groups goes to fundraising efforts, salaries, lobbying, and legal fees, not to the animals. Collectively, they bring in about a quarter of a billion dollars each year. These types of groups lead you to believe that they're protecting and providing shelters for animals. Did you know that HSUS does not even own or operate any shelters? Many Americans believe they are a national umbrella organization supporting local animal shelters, when in fact the smallest portion of HSUS budget, less than 1%, actually goes to local shelters. Finally, it's crucial that we understand there is a difference between animal rights and animal welfare. Animal welfare includes all animals, whether used for food, companionship, or sport. It's based on the principle of ownership of animals. And animal welfare reflects a common sense approach that animals should be treated well and that animal cruelty is not tolerated and is wrong. Farmers and ranchers believe wholeheartedly in animal welfare. In fact, they've dedicated their entire lives to it. Animal rights believes in the ideology that there is no distinction between animals and humans, you and your pet. They view owning a dog, a cat, or raising livestock as exploitation and slavery. Their main mission? To pass legislation until animals are no longer used or utilized in any way by humans. Do your research. Talk farmer or rancher. For centuries, the agriculture industry has been demonstrating animal welfare at the highest levels. Sure, not everyone's perfect, but overall, the industry is a shining example of animal husbandry. Also, remember to support ranchers who speak out on our behalf. It's intimidating because when animal rights groups attack, and they always do, it comes with death threats, turning animals loose to be hit on roads, destroying property and businesses, staging fake animal abuse videos in order to destroy generations of work, manipulation, and more are all common practices. We as farmers and ranchers are hesitant to speak out against them because we fear for the lives of our families and our animals. Does that sound like the type of organization you want to support? We oftentimes don't speak up, not because we have something to hide, but we're simply trying to protect what we love. So when an advocate speaks up on our behalf, make sure we support them and make sure you do your research and understand the difference between animal rights and animal welfare. All right, <clears throat> so that kind of went through some of the issues that farmers face with um, different groups, especially animal rights groups. And that's why it is so important to make sure that we do our research when it comes to issues. You know, if you see in the news that there's a farm in Indiana that is abusing its animals and all of this, it's probably better that instead of just believing that, you actually do your research. Maybe go visit that farm. Obviously, we probably aren't gonna go to Indiana to visit one, but if it was one around here, um, or, you know, just investigate it, you know, online yourself and see what you can find because more than likely the farm has some kind of social media or they may even have a live feed of their animals. And so then you could actually see what goes on at their farm. So we're going to look at animal welfare first. 
So animal welfare, these are going to be the people probably like me and you. Um, some of you may have stronger beliefs. I don't know. I haven't been able to get to know y'all like that as well this year. Um, but for the most part, this is going to be probably what most of the people in our community support. And um, this is going to be what um, farmers are, you know, animal welfare people. And so this is what farmers believe in. So they believe in the humane treatment of animals. So they want animals to be treated properly. They want them to be treated good. They also believe that most animal producers and researchers believe in animal welfare. And that means that the animals that are used for research at different universities, they believe in animal welfare too. So they believe that animals need to be taken good care of even though you know they are being used for things by humans. We still are gonna take good care of them. We're gonna make sure that they're not sick, that they're doing well, that they have a warm place to live and stay. And, and they're probably treated much better than, than most people think. So um, they support animal nutrition and making sure that animals have a good diet and that they are well cared for and get enough food. And they oppose the cruel treatment of animals. So usually for a farmer, they never want their animals to be treated cruelly. They never want to, you know, have them die or um, not feed them because that's their livelihood. You know, that's what they are doing. That's what they're doing to make money is being a farmer and taking care of their animals and then selling them or raising them for meat. So they don't want them treated cruelly because, you know, that's their livelihood and um, they want to make sure they're doing the best they can at it. Right. For animal welfare, they also believe that scientific information should be the basis for any decisions, laws, and regulations related to animal welfare. So there's a lot of laws and regulations that prevent farmers from being able to do certain things, but it also makes sure that farmers are following the animal welfare protocol and that they are treating animals humanely. But farmers and animal welfare people believe that all of this should be based on scientific information, not just opinions and not just, you know, feelings that people have. It should be based on scientific information and research. Um, they also believe that it's very difficult to be able to assess an animal's comfort because they do not talk and there's no universally accepted measures to use. So if you have an animal in your home, if you have a pet, maybe a dog or a cat or um, maybe something different, a guinea pig, something like that, you can probably tell when something might be wrong with your animal because you spend enough time with them to know that, hey, they're not eating as good today or they're not eating at all and that's not like them. So, you know, maybe they're sick or you can kind of tell what exactly might be going on with them, especially if something changes. And, and farmers can do that too. They can tell. They are with their animals every day and so they can tell if something's wrong or if they're sick. But you can't always, you know, communicate things because animals can't talk. There's no really measure to use to be able to assess if animals feel comfortable or not. But usually animals will let you know. So there are laws that protect the animals. So the first one is the Animal Welfare Act. This sets the minimum standards for animals used for sale, research, transport, and exhibits. Um, it was last updated in 2008. And then there is the Health Research Act. It was passed in 1985, and it sets the standards for animals used in biomedical and behavioral research. All right, now let's talk about animal rights. So this um, is going to be the more radical group. And, you know, some of those pictures you saw, saw throughout the video are, um, were a little bit probably more intense than what you expected. Um, and animal rights groups can be a little bit more intense and more radical. Um, animal rights believe that animals should not be used by humans at all. They should not be used for food, for research, for you know, pets, for anything. And these issues actually go back to um, thousands of years ago to the ancient Greeks. It's not like this is a newfound thing. Um, it's something that they've been dealing with forever. 
The largest animal rights group in the United States is the Humane Society of the United States, also known as the HSUS. All right, so um, I believe on your workbook, you have a place to fill in some differences in animal welfare and rights. So animal welfare involves the good treatment of animals. They are less radical in their activities. Um, they think it's okay to eat meat and to use animals. They are typically supported by most animal producers and researchers, but they don't support animal rights. So animal rights, mean that they support that animals are not used whatsoever at all. Not for meat, not for food, nothing. Um, they can be more radical in their activities, including violence. And usually um, they're either vegetarian or vegan in lifestyle. Now that doesn't mean that everyone that is vegetarian or vegan believes in animal rights. Some people choose to be vegetarian or vegan simply because of the nutrition value, or some people do it because of a religion or you know, maybe they just don't like meat, but not all of them believe in the radical animal rights movement. Um, just like the video, there may be some weird, not necessarily gory, but um, pictures that you don't expect, so make sure that you're prepared for that. All right, so these are some of the animal rights campaigns that we've seen over the years. Um, so they believe that animals should have the same rights as humans. And so these are some of the campaigns that they have um, done to try to display that they believe that animals should have the same rights as humans. So this, they have people or something they made look like people, mannequins, to where they look like they, you know, have been packaged for meat just like an animal would. And this, it has a person on a grill, um, like if you were grilling chicken or beef or whatever, to try to display their message. So very extravagant in their messages. Any questions about animal rights or animal welfare so far? Um, just a fun story about animal rights groups. Um, in college, when I was in college at NC State, we have a big brickyard and every year we would have the um, National Ag Week and so the animal science department would bring animals out to the brickyard and you could go and see the animals and talk to them and learn about agriculture and animals. And it was you know, a really cool opportunity to educate people. Well, they did have an animal rights activist PETA type group that was on campus at NC State. And they came one night, it's been several years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago now. But they came one night and they let all the animals out of their cages in the middle of Raleigh at NC State's campus. So um, that was a mess to try to clean up because, you know, trying to find all the animals, get them back together, get them back in their cages, um, in their little pens, not cages, but in their pens. And so that, you know, just caused a lot of trouble. And so the PETA people probably thought they were doing what was best, you know, letting the animals out. But then what if the animals would have gotten hit by a car or, you know, something worse? And so that really was not the best option to protect the animals. So now they have to take a lot of it more extreme measures um, when they have the Ag Week at NC State. All right. We're going to finish the rest of this tomorrow. So your assignment for today. So you have your animal rights 
in welfare notebook workbook and so you need to work on filling that out if you did not follow along to fill that out also if you have not submitted your um, workbook from the beginning of the week make sure you get that finished and go ahead and submit that So you'll go through and add in, um, in your own words, a definition of what you think each of these are. <clears throat> this <clears throat> For this slide, <clears throat> excuse me, you're gonna match the logo on the side with the group that it goes with. So you can just draw a line or you can drag and move it either way. To match those two that, that those go with. All right, and then match the logo on the side with the animal rights group listed below by dragging and moving the logo to the right in the animal organization name. So same thing as you did on the other ones. And then down here, <clears throat> what is the difference in animal welfare and animal rights? So you're gonna put some of the differences between those two. All right, and then you're gonna take the animal ag personality test. So for each of the examples, you'll put a tick or an X or a bullet or whatever by the statement that you agree with. When you finish the question and write the letter you agree with in the space provided, continue to the next page. So you're gonna read this, wells are in danger. They've been killed for their meat and oil. Decide which letter is you. Let's say that if you decide C is you, you can just put an X there. Um, and you can come up here, well, come up down. Come up here and put B. All right, and then you go through and you're gonna do all of those questions. And then when you get down here to your score, you're gonna count the number of times you chose each letter statement. So you'll go back up here, count how many times you chose a letter. If you chose A two times, you put a two, B three times, C one time, D one time, All right? And then you're gonna put whatever letter you agree most with here. So let's say that that was B. Okay, and then you come down here and you're gonna read what your position is about animal welfare or rights. Again, there's no wrong answer. You will find people from everywhere that believe in all of these. It's a matter of opinion and just kind of what you believe in, how you were raised. Um, and you'll also find people from each of these groups who support animals. So there are some people in the animals rights groups that do support animals but the majority of them are just more radical about how they go about expressing that. It is possible to believe in more than one of these. They are not necessarily alternatives. Most people care about humans, animals, and the environment. So none of them are wrong. But you're gonna read about whichever letter you got. And then you're gonna come down here and write a three to five sentence statement about your personal beliefs about animal rights and animal welfare. All right, once you have finished that, then you will submit it in your Canvas where it was at on Canvas. Yes, here. You will submit it here. Any questions on that? All right, I'm gonna take attendance real quick. All right, is Corbin with us? Zanaya? Is 
for Quandre. Callie. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Sarah. Here. Thank you. Jalen. Here. Thank you. Michaela. Autumn Fairbanks. Logan. Ted. Here. Thank you, sir. Anaya. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Hal. Edwin. Brayden. John. Jaden. Thank you. Josiah. Here. Thank you, sir. David. Here. Thank you. Shakira. Kelsey. Here. Thank you. Wilson. Here. Thank you. And Autumn Whaley. Here. Thank you. All right. Well, if you do not have any questions or need any help, you are free to go. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. Hey, Mr. Stark. Hey. I just want to let you know that you do know Edwin went missing, right? No. Yeah. That, world? Yeah, that's why he'd probably not come to class. Do you know when he went missing? I don't know. I just heard about it on Snapchat, so. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, for letting me know. Yeah, I was just going to let you know. Let me know if you hear anything else. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm hmm You have a good day. You too. Miss Tar, I have a couple of questions. I just want to go over with some stuff with you right quick. Yes, um, sir. What's up? Um, starting from Tuesday on the playlist. Um um oh sorry. Um the product by product info um graphic presentation. What exactly do we have to do on that? Um, let's see. Oh, this one. So, So you're going to pick one animal, either a hog or a cow, to research. And okay. you're going to find 10 products that are from the animal, either from their skin, bones, blood, hair, or organs that we use. Um, and so you're, then you're just going to put a picture of that product and what it is and like where it comes from on the animal, if it says it. Some of them may not say exactly where it comes from. Um, and so after you have those 10 pictures, you would answer these three questions and you can do it in a PowerPoint or you can make like a, a poster or like a word doc that's like creative and colorful that looks kind of like this. Um, any of those three things. Okay. So do we need like, um, do we need I have I was having trouble okay I actually started this assignment I was having trouble with the hair and the internal in the um internal organs um finding like a um byproduct for them too um well yeah it doesn't have to be anything it doesn't you don't have to have one from each specific category oh, okay. probably probably 
some of the ones you found do come from the hair, but you just maybe didn't explicitly state it. So you just need 10 by products. It doesn't have to be from those certain, like the hair. Um, okay. It doesn't have to be from those certain ones. Okay. Does that help? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, so we need two photos for each of um each of the pick each of the like um items we pick. You just need one photo, but you have to have ten items. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I yeah. got you. So let's say that you research and figure out that part of maybe the bristles on a toothbrush, maybe part of those, I'm, I'm really not sure, I don't know if this is true, but um, maybe <laughs> part of those come from like hair on a cow or something crazy. So then you could use a picture of a toothbrush for one of your products. Okay. Or maybe you figure out, you find um, like some medicine that maybe they use that they get from um, part of the cow or the pig, and you can use that as your picture for that product. Got you, got you. Because I already had, um, I already had, um, the somebody I already had up here was, um, hold on, sorry, computer's loading. Um, I had coats, gloves, shoes, because I'm doing the hog one, not the um, cattle. I got, okay. I got coats, gloves, shoes, um, buttons, um, fine china, and glue. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you're doing good. So, you just need a few more. Okay. All right. Um, I think that was it for that one. Um, for the um, animal, um, for the workbook, um, the workbook. Um, how is this last part? It says, "Where are the um? Where are? It's like a map with stuff on it." Mm -hmm. I, can you help me with that? Because I was a little bit confused on that one. Um, I think it's in the video too. If you go. Okay. And watch it. It probably has the slide that I'm thinking of. Uh, not, let me find it. It's like a map with um, like a turkey, a hog, a chicken. Yeah. So, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah. So oh. you just want to place them in the correct areas. Because these are the areas where they produce the most of those. So is that like the areas, like that's the real areas? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, uh, I don't see the chickens. All right, here are the little chicks. Yes, I don't see that on mine. What does yours have, have? I have a um, I have a fish. I have a cow. I have three eggs i have a big white chicken um a hog a turkey and a pig oh so yours has more okay yeah the only, th the only thing i don't have on your screen is the um is the um yellow chickens i don't have them okay let me pull up yours then And sorry to bother you. I'm just trying to get work oh, done. No. You're never a bother. I would rather you ask and get help than, you know, have to redo it or um, not turn it in or something. That's, that's why we're here to help. So the dairy cow goes about right here. And you had the pig and the turkey. And you had your meat cow kind of middle. And then your eggs actually go kind of right here in that part of North Carolina. Um, 
And then the chicken, is that a chicken? Yeah. So chickens will take the place of the chicks right here. All right, so then um, you have a crab. Where do you think the crab probably would go? Oh, I think the crab will go more to the bottom. Yeah, so more towards like the coast, coastline here. Yes, ma'am. We'll put it right here. Hard to see it. And then the fish, I believe this is a trout. Is that right? I think so. But that actually is more in the mountain area. So it would be up here. I'll give you a second, let you get all that down. Yes. Okay, I got it down. All right. Um, what other questions can I help you with? Um, I think I know for um, so for on um, Monday, the animal byproduct notes is the same as what we just did, right? Or is that two different things? So the byproduct notes are these right here. Okay. That are in this packet. And then the notes from today are the animal welfare notes that they're they're up there today for today's assignment. Okay. So yeah, you should be done with this. Um, okay. If you haven't gone through and answered some of these questions, uh, make sure you go through and do that. Um, oh, I, I had to get all of them. I would just it was just on the map one. I okay. Was, so yeah, so you could go ahead and submit this for Monday's animal byproduct notes. Okay, it, it was another one for Tuesday, but like, I think it's the same one. The um, yeah. product. You're talking about the workbook? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So in this video that I put up, I just talked about the economic, like those last three slides, I think. Um, and I think all you had to do for those was the map. Though. Um, yeah. So once you had the map done, then you're good. So okay. that was just, um, so that takes you to the same spot that you submit it for Monday. It was just more of just a reminder to make sure people submitted it. Okay. So yeah, those are the same things. Um, scavenger hunt. Um, so what I have to do is I just have to take pictures of like, so I can take pictures of like bacon, eggs, stuff like that. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're Ms. very welcome. All right. Let me know if you need help with anything else. I definitely will. And thank you so much for all your help and patience. Anytime. You have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.